Hello, and welcome to Mitchell Consulting's webinar series for our Mitchell University. Today, we're going to be working with SAP Business One, and we're going to go over the CRM 360. So today, we're going to be working with SAP Business One version 8.82. And what we're going to talk about is the business partner and how in SAP Business One, the business partner is more than just where you enter the customer or the vendor, but it's a snapshot to see all the activity and information related to that business partner. So again, we're going to be using SAP Business One version 8.82. So let's go into our business partners and let's open up our business partner master data. So here we can see the business partner master data. We're going to call up a customer. And we can see here that we have not only the information about the business partners, in this case the customer, we have the name, we have general information about the customer, we have our contacts that we can have, we have our addresses, both bill twos and ship twos, we have our payment information, including our banks and business partner banks, credit card information. We can set up our series of payment runs, how the business partner is going to pay us or how we are going to pay the business partner if it's a vendor, along with our bank. We have our accounting information for posting purposes if we want to set up dunning letters for our business partner. We have the ability of having up to 64 additional business partner properties which could be used on various reports. We also have information for remarks, as well as maintaining pictures, and information for attachments. These are for files outside of SAP Business One. So you see here, this is typical in a software where we have the main information about the business partner. In this case, our customer, ADA Technologies. But SAP Business One goes further than that. Not only is this the screen where we enter the information about business partner or the customer, we have the ability to drill down and look at information linked to documents as well as to um, our calendar. So for example, here we can see that we're looking at an account balance. We're looking at outstanding deliveries for this customer, outstanding orders, and sales opportunities. So we can integrate with our other modules, for example, sales opportunity here. We can also with SAP Business One, we can maintain foreign currencies as well as local currencies. So we can see here that the business partner currency for this customer is euros. You can see here the currency. So when we're looking at the BP currency, we're looking at the balance in euros. So he owes us 40,000 euros. If we switch to our system currency, which in this case is US dollars, we can immediately see the differences in the conversion. So we can see that he owes us 56,663.64 in US dollars, which in his currency is going to be 40,497.53 in euros. We can use our arrows or our links, what we call drill downs, and drill into the account balance. So again, here we have a snapshot of what the business partner owes us. Again, we can select this specific range to look at on the aging. We can look at display, for example, the last five transactions, if we know it would be somewhere towards the end. And we have the ability of displaying unreconciled transactions only. One of the benefits of SAP Business One is that data is never really removed or deleted from the system. So what happens is we can always go back at any given time and see what the aging was. We can go back and run an aging or months ago. We don't have to worry with some systems that at the end of the month the paid invoices are cleared out and we can't re really run an aging if we'd like. So here we can see if we look at the unreconciled transactions only, this is what the business partner owes us. Again, you can see the local currency balance as well as the foreign currency or business partner currency balance in euros. If we select this, now we're looking at the entire history of this business partner. So you can see here how we have an invoice number 10 for this amount and we have an incoming payment. You 
can see that the balance is zero. Again, with SAP, we can simply right-click. We can look at the applied transactions. We can see how the invoice was paid. Again, with our drill-down capability, we can go directly into the invoice. We can open it up, and we can see exactly what this invoice was for. And we can see that it was applied. That's why it's closed. Again, we can go here and look at how it was paid. So again, a snapshot of all the information we need is right on one screen. We don't have to go from screen to screen or go from um, report to report. We can see everything here. We can also run our aging. So we can create an aging for this customer. We can set how we want to see it. Again, we're looking at the information here. We're looking at the business partner currency. We can easily switch to our local currency. We can actually switch to another currency we're using, Canadian dollars. Again, all the information is available at our fingertips. We can use this for a collection report because we're looking at aging it by due date to see when it is due. We can also run it by posting date or document date to give us a true aging. And we have the ability of printing this if we wish. We can look in graph detail if we'd like. We can show a graph. Again, we can open this up. We can choose our graph type. Again, we have the information here. We can do the same with the delivery tickets. We can look at sales orders and even opportunities from the opportunity sales opportunity screen. So we can see here that we have two opportunities for this person. We can see where they are in the stages. We can see this one here. We have a 60% chance of closing. This one we have a 20% chance of closing. Again, we can open up and we can see the sales opportunity. So again, we have our snapshot, allows us to see at a glance the information about the business partner. We can also interface this with, uh, with Outlook or a calendar. So for example, I can go here and if I select my calendar, I can see what I have today. You can see I have a couple follow-up calls. If I click on this, you can see I open up the activity, which is linked to that business partner. So we have the ability of creating activities as well as follow-up. So let's look at the activities now, see how we can use this to better manage our business partner. If we look here, we can do we can create activities. We can also create um, service calls. We're using our service and repair module here. We can look at um, related activities. We saw we can see activities for the business partner are already there. And we can also create recurring transactions. So if we want to create a recurring billing, maybe we want to do a blanket invoice, and we want to do some recurring billing, we can do that. We won't spend time on recurring billing today. We do have another webinar that will go into detail of recurring billing as well as campaign management. So today we're just going to talk about the activities. So let's go in and let's uh, create an activity. Again, you have some activity types. You have phone calls, a meeting, a task, a note, a campaign, or other. Here we're going to take our type and we can define new here. We want to define a new type. We have right now a general and a collection type. This is important for later for reporting purposes because let's say this is going to be a collections call. I can create a subject. Again, I can define new subjects if I want. We're going to call this a collection call. Who we want to assign it to, you can see that I'm signed in or logged in as Jason, as a manager, but maybe I'm following up on a call and I want to assign it to the salesperson. For example, let's say that 
uh, Bill was the one who took the call. Or that's his account. I can assign it to him if I wish. You can see it's assigned by. You can see the information here. Again, coming from the business partner. You can see that we have our business partner information here. Again, we're pulling this information. You can see the contact person. That's in the business partner as well as phone information. You have a general tab that you can enter information concerning this call. So we're just going to give it a subject. We're just going to call this uh, follow-up call for collections. You can actually enter the time that you are on the call. Right now it's defaulting a setup for 15 minutes, but I can easily change the time if I wished. I can look at the contents, what I'm calling about. And again, this is helpful because I want to give a lot of detailed information so somebody else will get this. And the follow-up will be able to see what I'm doing. So again, I can talk to a person. Maybe I asked them for some money. I can link this to a specific document. So let's say we're talking about a specific invoice. So look at AR invoice. And here we're going to tab. And we're just going to select this invoice here. Again, I have the ability. So now when I drill into it, I can see the actual AR invoice we're talking about. Again, this is helpful. Because again, this was, you can see that the sales employee, this was Bill. So I can, again, assign this to him. So he can follow up. You can also enter attachments outside of SAP Business One. You can browse. Maybe you're talking to a business partner, and there's some technical information that they need, or hazmat information that's needed. You can attach the documents outside of SAP to attach to this call. So again, we're just going to add this call. Now we go here and we go to our related activities. We can see the call that we just created here. We should see it on our calendar. We add it to the calendar. And again, if this was assigned to Bill, he would get an alert. You can see our alerts over here. Again, you can see schedule activities and so on. So he would actually get the alert. We were doing that. So let's go back in to the related activities. So again, we can look at this activity. We can set this to be a recurring activity. Maybe it's something that we need to do on a weekly basis or monthly or annual. We can set that up. We want. We can also create a follow-up because let's say we spoke with the person, and now we want to add. So by by clicking follow-up, what we're doing is we're creating another activity. You can see that we're creating activity 18, also got activity 17, and you can see the remark is a continuation of the follow-up call. So I don't lose my audit trail. I keep a nice flow because maybe we're talking back and forth to this. And the same thing, I can enter my information. You can see the content from the previous one. So we can then add some information here. So again, maybe I want to create a follow-up call for Monday, and so on. You can see that I'm still related. I'm linking the same document because I'm activity 18, the continuation of activity 17 and so on. So if I look now on my related activities, you can see 17 and 18. And again, you can see the information. The activity is nice. The activity flows throughout the system. You can create various activities. <laughs> um, you can see here display only open activities. So maybe when an activity is closed, so for example, let's look at activity 14. Let's say at this one, we're 
done with this activity. This was part of a campaign. So we finished our campaign. We want to close it. We can close it or make it inactive. We're just going to go ahead and close this activity. And it's just letting you know once we close an activity, we cannot reopen it. Can you guess? So now, when we go back in, we look at our related activities. We can see display only open. We can see 16, 17, and 18. So the other ones were closed. And so on. So we can keep it this way. Just look at, look, our, look at our information here. Again, we can create a new activity right from the screen also. So what SAP Business One is doing is giving you a snapshot of what we call the CRM 360. We have everything right here on the screen that we can work with. Again, very simple to work with, seeing everything as related to this business partner. We can update this as we go on. And again, you can see where the information is being pulled from. You can see Mary was our contact person. Again, we can have all types of information here. Again, is our business partner currencies and related information about the business partner. We can also have the business partner be active or inactive for a certain range of time. We want to put them on hold for, for any reason, maybe for collections. Again, we can see our drill down into our account balances. We can look at open deliveries, open orders, and our sales opportunity. We have everything here. And again, when we talked about uh, the activity, when we're looking at an activity, we're going to use this a lot. It's good to go ahead and create my types of activities and my subjects and my assigned. Because we have some reports now we're going to take a look at. And these reports allow us to run based on those selections we created. We can, we can also go here from the business partner. We don't have to be in the business partner. We can open up the activity directly from here. In this case, we would assign the information, but we would have to assign it to a business partner. So for example, we can grab any business partner. We don't necessarily have to be in the business partner. So we can assign this to that business partner, custom exhaust. Let's look at some of the reports. So we have a couple. We have my activities. As we saw before, that when we assign an activity, by default, it assigns to the current user. So it would be Jason. So I can easily just go here, and I'm looking at all my activities. Again, we see everything here. These are all my activities. And again, I can scroll in here. I can double click on any of the num on either rows. So if I double click on the number, I'm going to sort these by number. I may want to sort it by uh, activity type, and so on. And again, I can drill into any activity and see everything about the activity. So you can see that this is for a different business partner who is a customer, all the corresponding information about this activity. You can also do an activities overview, again, for reporting purposes. So here we can go ahead and we can see all the activities and so on here. I can do it this way. I can go back. So let's see, we, saw, we have some for Sophie. So we can select Sophie. just looking at hers. Again, this is where, if we're going to use this, it's nice to do the breakdown. So you can also go by customer groups, by vendor groups, by specific contact people. Again, the properties we discussed, we have those properties related to business partners. And here we can, again, our activities. So we can break down the activity type. I want to look at, let's say, all the phone calls or all the meetings. I can do a range. I can do types. I can do 
selections. Let's do all locations. And again, we can also do subjects. And again, you see the new information here. We can also use the filtering. So if we want to bring everything up, let's clear this. So we're looking at everything here. And we can look at our report. And we can use our filtering, which is standard in SAP Business One. We can go to our filter. So we can do some filtering here. We can go to, let's say, the, uh, the contact person. Well, actually, let's go to the handled by. And we can do a couple things. We can say equal to. We only have one value. We can do equal to Sophie. I'm going to click filter and click OK. And you can see now that we're filtering on the handled by. And this is highlighted. Click on this, we eliminate the filter. It's always there. We can turn it back on. So the filtering is something that is standard in SAP Business One on almost all the inquiry screens. And you can do some rules. For example, we can say equal to or not equal to. We can do in a range or out of a range or greater than and so on. So if, for example, on the number, we would say in a range, and we want from number three to number seven, and we filter, we would get this information here. We can also do greater than or equal to, let's say, four. And again, you can see, if we search on here, we can see our information. So we have the filtering capabilities here. We can clear them when we want. That's one way of doing it. We can bring everything here at one point. And then we can use our filtering capability here. Notice the filtering capability that you see here is coming from the actual report or the activity overview. So we have our information in here. So again, what this allows us to do is we have two types of reports. We have the activity overview, which we can look at all activities based on all our business partners entered by all our users or handle by users or employees that were entered. And if we use it for ours, we can do the same thing, but we can go to My Activities. My Activities is a quick snapshot of all the activities that I or the current user has entered. So I am logged in as Jason. So again, I just want to look at my information here. I can do that. Let's say I'm the sales manager, and Sophie's one of our sales employees, and I want to see what kind of activity she has. Then I can use this screen, and I would go here and select Sophie. And again, I'm looking at everything that's related to Sophie. Again, I have the ability of displaying only open activities for all activities. Let's do a quick recap on what we saw today. In SAP Business One version 882, we went into our business partner master data. Again, when we discussed this, this is more than just a screen to enter information about the business partner. This allows us to do a lot of CRM capabilities. And again, when we talk about business partner terminology in SAP Business One, a business partner is considered a customer a vendor, or a lead. And we'll have other webinar series on this. Um, leads are nice. Lead is basically a potential customer. You can enter all the information about the person or the business. Define it as a lead. The lead, I'm allowed. I can actually go in and create sales opportunities and campaigns against leads. I can also do quotations and sales orders against the leads, but I can't invoice. Once I invoice, I would have to turn that lead into a customer. It's a nice advantage in SAP Business One because it keeps the, uh, the customer list from getting uh, you know, data that doesn't really is not related to any of the current customers or business partners. So again, we saw the business partner master. Again, 
it is where we would enter the information concerning the business partner, as you would see. You can put general information about the business partner. You can create an unlimited amount of contacts. We can create multiple bill twos and ship twos. We can set up our payment terms in our business partner bank, again, for wire transfers and so on. We can select our payment, how we get paid by this business partner. If it's incoming bank transfers from different banks, as well as our bank information. If we have our accounting, we can determine the accounts receivable account that's linked to this business partner. You can see that this is going to a foreign account. We can do consolidations. We can consolidate both on the payment side and the delivery side. Again, we have our 64 properties, which we can use in our reports. We can just put general remarks about the business partner, as well as any type of pictures, images we want to load. And we can also put attachments outside of SAP Business One for this business partner. You can see here that the snapshot, we have our drill down, our link. Right now, we see that the business partner currency here the currency is euro so we're looking at this display in the business partner currency so we can see that this business partner owes us 40,000 in euros we can click to our local currency which is US dollars so we can see the information in our US dollars we can look in a graph mode if we like the sales analysis again detailed information about the business partner and then drill into read the document, read the detail. This way, so you can see here, it's an AR invoice. You can see the business partner currency and the exchange rate at the time this order was entered. You can see the order is the AR invoice is closed because it's been paid. So again, you can look at all the information here. Again, we can easily switch. We can look at this in our local currency and our system currency. The difference between the two is the system currency is the currency of the general ledger or the currency of the company. The local currency would be the currency in the country you're actually doing business. So in this case, our system currency and local currency is both in US dollars. And then we can define the business partner currencies and we can see it here. We can actually drill into the uh, account balance look at what he owes us, the aging. We can see here by displaying unreconciled transactions only, we can see what this business partner owes us. And again, we're looking at the corresponding currency, the local currency, the US dollars, as well as the foreign currency or the business partner currency, the corresponding euros. If we display unreconciled, here we can look at both what the customer owes and what has been paid. Again, in SAP Business One, we never remove data. What we're doing is we reconcile the data. So we can see here that this invoice number 10 has a balance of zero, and this payment also has a balance of zero. So these two have been applied against each other. I can right click, look at my applied transactions, and I can see that Invoice number 10 was paid with incoming payment number 11. So if I display unreconciled, I just see what the business partner owes. I can run an aging from here. Again, I can look at my aging and the corresponding currencies. I can actually even look at Canadian dollars that I'm using versus euros. Again, versus our local currency. US dollars. I can sort how I want to do it. So I'm doing by document date. So I'm looking at a true month end aging. I can also do it by due date. You can go out here. For example, here, if I do a due date, you can see that this is going to change. And so on. You can also do the internal reconciliations directly from here in the case that you would have a um, business partner would have maybe an invoice and an on-account payment or a credit that wasn't applied, you can do your internal reconciliations here. So what we're doing is we're, again,
snapshot was doing everything from one screen. We don't have to go into the menus and go to different things. We don't have to go to internal reconciliations here. We don't have to go to activities. We just have it all on this one screen. And again, you can see the same with the opportunities. Down here, what you can also do, you can do service calls. You can create new service calls and activities if you're using the service and repair module down here. And here you can look at related activities. So again, we're looking at the activities for this business partner. We can look at all activities here or just display what's open. We can see that 14 was closed. You can also create recurring transactions in the system. We don't have any for this business partner. And again, we can create the activity directly from here. We saw that in activities. We, can, we have a fixed set of activities. We have a phone call, a meeting, a task, a note, a campaign, or an other. We can actually define our own types. So we can define new types depending on your business, the types you may want to have. See that by clicking Define New. You can do the same with the subjects. You can create subjects. You can assign the activity to a user. Okay. In the case we saw before, we were looking at an outstanding invoice that was done by Bill. So we want we may want to assign this to Bill for the follow-up to collect the money. And we have our general information about the activity. We can enter a subject, the time we spoke. We can look at our content information. We can link it to any document within SAP Business One. So we can look at all these different types of documents depending on what we're working with. We can also attach documents outside of SAP Business One to this activity. So that was that was through the business partner here. And then of course we can do the activity directly. We don't have to do it from the business partner. We can also do it here if we wish. And we can look at our reports. We have two main reports. We have the My Activities, which will just give me a snapshot of all the activities assigned to me. And I can display only open activities. Or I can display all activities. Or I can do a report. If I want to do an activities overview, again, I have the ability of doing it with certain business partners. I can do it by who handled the activity. In this case, we're looking at Sophie her activities. I can also do it from an employee standpoint. If I'm integrated with the human resources system. And again, I can do some filtering on my customer groups and here on my activities. So again, I can check those activities. And then the types and subjects that I can define, I can also do here. So I can run this. And again, I'm looking at just Sophie. I can also use the filtering capability within SAP, so I can run this for everybody. I want to look at everybody and everything in the company. I can easily double click on any of the columns, so I can sort these in orders. And if I want, I can use my filtering capability here, which is part of standard SAP Business One, which is what I saw on the first screen. So I can then can say handled by, let's say, equal to. And I can select Sophie. And you can see now I'm filtering, like I would in the original report. I can tell I'm filtering because I can see that I'm filtering on the handled by. I can also do two filters if I want. So I can filter on, let's say, Sophie and the contact person. Equal to, let's see what Sophie has. Sophie has Bob and Judy, so let's say it's equal to Judy. You can see now that I'm filtering on the handled by, a little filter here, as well as the contact. So I can do that within my system. I can turn them off, I can turn them on. If I want to clear, I can clear, and so on. Well, then that concludes our uh, presentation today. Uh, we talked about SAP Business One, the Business Partner, CRM 360. This 
webinar is being recorded. It will be available on our website. You can visit us at www.mitchellgroup.com to view the presentation. Once again, we thank you for your time.